In this video I will show you everything you need to know about the Lord of the Rings mod in Minecraft. So the first thing we wanna do is to get to Middle-earth. You can do this by selecting the word type to be Middle-earth and that's it. Or you can create a normal word, craft a gold ring with 8 golden nuggets and throw it in fire. And now you have a portal to Middle-earth. When you go through the portal you will find yourself in the Shire. After a few minutes Gandalf will appear and he will give you a red book and a few bags. And he will teach you a few things about the mod. Now I'm gonna tell you the same things, just a little more in detail. So when you press L you will find the Lord of the Rings menu. First let's take a look at the achievements. Here you can see all of the achievements that you achieved and the ones that you didn't achieve. Achievements have a few uses but I will talk about them when I get there. Next let's take a look at the map. Here you can find Middle Earth. You can see some settings but they are pretty self explanatory. But probably one of the most important part of the map is that you can teleport. This is really useful because the map is hundreds of thousands of blocks long. You can teleport to waypoints by clicking on a waypoint and pressing F. But there is a wait time if you wanna teleport again, which is on default 30 minutes. And the more you teleport to a certain waypoint, the less the wait time is. You can only teleport to waypoints that you unlocked. You can unlock waypoints by going to that area. For example, if I go to Mordor, I unlocked all of Mordor's waypoints. And if you have cheats enabled, you can teleport to anywhere without a wait time by moving your cursor to where you want to go and pressing M. And you can even create your own waypoints. This is good for marking your base or a cool structure that you found. And for every achievement you achieved, you can create a waypoint. So if you unlocked 10 achievements, you can create 10 waypoints. Now let's talk about factions. There are 24 factions that you can be friends with or enemies. You can be friends with a faction by increasing your alignment points with them. You can increase it by doing quests for them and killing their enemies. You can see a certain faction's enemies by turning a few pages. But you can only get alignment points from killing enemies if you kill them in the faction's influence area, which you can view here. So if you kill the enemies outside this, you won't get alignment points. And the reduced alignment area means that you get half of the alignment points that you would get in the full alignment area. But what's the point of being a friend of a faction? Well, you can hire units from them, use their crafting table and you can even pledge them. And if you kill a faction's NPCs, you will get minus alignment points and you become an enemy. And if you are an enemy of a faction, they will attack you. But you will also get minus points if you kill an ally or a friend of a faction. For example, if you kill a Rohirrim, you will get minus points with Rohan and with Gondor, because they are allies. If you have plus alignment points with two factions or more that are enemies of each other, you will lose alignment points from both factions. For example, if you have 500 points with Gondor and 200 with Nerharad, they are enemies of each other, so you will slowly lose points from both of them. And also there is this icon that shows if a faction encourages war crimes, which means killing peaceful NPCs. If it does encourage it, you will get alignment points. But if it doesn't, you won't get alignment points from killing peaceful NPCs. And enemy soldiers will always attack each other. For example, Gondor will always attack Nerharad. Some NPCs will sometimes attack you even if you have plus element with them. For example Mordor, you have to have at least 100 element points to make sure nobody attacks you from them. This is the same for Woodland Realm, but you only need 50 element points. Ok, fellowships. This is only for multiplayer, but basically you can create or join fellowships to accomplish a common goal. Benefits of it is that you can share custom waypoints, you can disable PvP within the fellowship, and you can even protect land from other players, and a bunch of more stuff. Titles are names that you can give yourself, they will appear everywhere where your name shows up, for example in the chat or in fellowships. And you can obtain more titles by accomplishing a certain deed. Alright shields, shields are cosmetic items so they won't help you in battle, you can get them by reaching a goal which can be mini quest, alignment and even achievements. And settings, here you can change a few settings but I think you can leave it like this. Ok now let's talk about quests, NPCs can give you mini quests, 
You can get quests from NPCs that have an exclamation mark above their head. When you right click the NPC, it will tell you what the quest is. You can either accept it or decline it. If you decline it, nothing will happen. But if you accept it, a book will appear above the NPC to make it easier to find it when you finish the quest. A quest tracker will appear in the top left corner and the quest will be recorded to the red book, which you got from Gandalf. You can also craft a red book like this. You can only have 5 quests per faction, so if you change your mind and you don't wanna do a certain quest, you can abandon it in the red book by clicking on this X button. And you can track a certain quest by pressing this button. If you complete a quest, you get some coins and alignment with that faction. And for harder quests, you get better rewards. Quests can be collecting quests where you need to collect a certain amount of items. They can be killing quests where you need to kill a certain amount of enemies. They can be bounty quests. They are multiplayer quests when an NPC gives a quest to kill another player. A player can get a bounty on its head by killing a bunch of NPCs from a certain faction. If you complete the quest, you get a bunch of alignment and coins. You can also fail the quest if the wanted player kills you. If that happens, you will lose considerable amount of alignment with the faction you have the highest amount of alignment with. And the wanted player will gain alignment with their highest faction. And there are pickpocket quests. You can get the quests from spies that are mainly found in Breland. To complete the quest, you have to sneak up on several Brelanders and attempt to pick their pockets. This is done by right clicking on the NPC with an empty hand while they are not looking. If you are successful, the NPC will drop a stolen item, which is usually some coins, nuggets, pipe feed, and you have to give the stolen items to the spy. And you can't use the stolen items for trading, crafting, etc. If the victim notices, they'll be angry, and you lose one alignment with Brilliant. If you complete the quest, you will get some coins and alignment with Isengard, if you don't already have minus points with them. Now let's talk about weapons. Some weapons are different because they came from different factions, made from different materials, so because of that I'm gonna talk about the average weapon of that kind. First let's take a look at the swords. They deal 6.5 or 7, and their speed and reach is normal. Battle axes deal 2 more damage, but they are slower than swords. Hammers also deal 2 more damage, but they deal 1 knockback and they are significantly slower than swords. Pikes deal the same amount of damage as swords, but they can reach twice as far and they are twice as slow. Lances are the same as pikes, but they deal 1 more knockback. Daggers deal less damage, they have less reach, but they are faster and you can even poison it. Spears deal slightly less than swords, they are slower, but they have a bigger reach and you can even throw it. Bows, you can shoot poison arrows with it and other than that it's the same as in vanilla. And crossbows, they are also the same as in vanilla, but you can poison its arrows and they use crossbow bolts as ammo. Throwing axes, they are like spears but there is no pullback time, so you could throw 4 axes per second. Sling, it uses pebbles as ammo and it's really weak, it takes 18 shots to kill a mortar orc. Blowgun, it uses darts as ammo, has a fast draw speed but it doesn't do much damage, but you can poison its darts. Balrog's whip, you can only get it from Balrog, it sets fire everywhere you hit and it has a charged attack as well. You can throw conquerors and they deal half a heart of damage. You can also throw plates, they deal close to nothing and when you throw it, it breaks, so you can't pick them up. Equipment modifiers. You can put modifiers to your tools, weapons, armor, and these modifiers can make your items better or worse. For example, I have this skin modifier on my sword, which gives plus 1 damage, but it can also be blunt, which gives minus 1 damage. You can get these modifiers when you craft the item, when you reforge it, and when you apply a scroll to it. You can reforge an item at an anvil, but it will cost you materials that the weapon is made out of. So if I wanna reforge a Gondorian sword, I will need iron, but if I wanna reforge an elven sword, I will need elven ingot. You can engrave your name to the equipment. You can also reforge an item with a blacksmith, but it will cost you coins, but they will give you better reforges. And if you wanna trade or smith with a blacksmith, you need to be at least plus 50 or 100 element with their faction. But a blacksmith can't reforge every type of weapon. For example, a Gondorian blacksmith can't reforge a Rivendell sword or a Mordor sword. There can only be 3 modifiers on an item, with the exception of special modifiers. So special modifiers. You can't get them by reforging. For example, all of the banes, which include Elf Bane, Dwarf Bane, Orc Bane, Troll Bane, Warg Bane, Spider Bane, Ride Bane. With these reforges, you will deal plus 4 against that kind of NPC. 
and you can get this by killing 100 to 250 NPCs of that kind. It can only be on melee weapons, so you can get these on your bows. And when you get one of the banes, you will get a chat message that your weapon became a certain NPC's bane. And only one bane can be on a weapon. And Raid Bane, you can get it from Ancient Weapons and with it you can slay Raids. Infernal, it will set the NPC on fire. You can get it by applying a flame of Odin to a weapon. Chilling, it will chill the target and you can get it by applying a Chills of Daedalus to a weapon. Headhunting, if you kill a player with it, they will drop their head and you can get it if you combine a headhunting trophy to your weapon. You can get a headhunting trophy every time you complete 5 bounty quests. True, you can only put it on Mithril armor and it will give you 4 protection against pole arms. You can get it if you apply a book of true silver to a Mithril armor. You can get this book from Mineshaft chests, mini quests from Durin's Folk, from Mystery Webs, from Killing NPCs and from Ruins. And Smith Scrolls, you can put modifiers to your items with them. You can apply them to an item on an anvil but it will cost you some materials that the weapon is made out of. You can also apply it to a weapon with a blacksmith for some coins. You can get them from killing NPCs, doing mini quests or finding them in a structure. If you want stronger scrolls, you can combine two lower level scrolls to get a higher tier one at a blacksmith for some coins. And some modifiers aren't compatible with each other, for example blunt and mighty. Or lasting and enduring. Now let's take a look at ancient weapons. These weapons can be dug up from remains in the dead marshes. When you jump into the water to pick up the items, a wraith will spawn. You can only slay the wraith with a wraith bane sword. Which you can get from these ancient weapons. So until then, just run. When you got these sword pieces, you can craft it together and right click it and you got a weapon. This also works with armor. Alright, so trading. The currency is silver coins and with it you can buy all sorts of items and units. You can also sell items to earn some coins. Traders are the NPCs that have a coin in their hand. You won't be able to trade with a trader if you have negative alignment with their faction. And some traders require a certain amount of alignment to trade with them. So for example, I have 10 alignment points with Woodland Ram and as you can see I can't trade with them. But if I set my alignment points to let's say 100, now I can. You can also exchange coins, there is a 10 coin and there is also 100 coin and with this you can carry a lot of money easier. You can also craft silver coins with 4 silver nuggets. The item that the trader sells or buys and even the prices can vary strongly from trader to trader, so you might wanna find another trader with better prices. A trader can only buy or sell a limited number of items before the trade becomes locked for a short amount of time. An indicator shows how close the trade is to becoming locked. Because of this, the best way to sell as much items as possible is to sell them all at once, compared to selling it one by one. As you can see I sold 8.5 more stacks by selling it all at once. After a certain amount of items traded, the trader changes their complete set of goods and when this happens you won't be able to trade for a short amount of time. If a trader dies, a floating coin appears and the trader respawns after a while, which can be from a few minutes to over an hour. But the chunk has to be loaded for the trader to respawn, but this doesn't apply to traveling traders. So traveling traders, these NPCs will randomly spawn in some place and after 20 minutes they will despawn. And the chat message shows when a trader arrives and leaves and they always have escorts. If you wanna trade with the Galadrim and Rivender Wanderers, you have to be at least plus 75 with Lothorian or High Elves. You can trade with all of the other traders as long as you don't have negative alignment with their faction. Odman Collectors, they are traveling traders who aren't aligned with any faction and they basically sell junk for coins. Dorvnions even give out mini quests to kill Odman Collectors. If you reforge an item with an Odman Collector, it will also rename the item. You can hire farm hands from farmers, they will grow and harvest your crops. Just keep in mind that they are extremely slow, they will cost you some coins and you have to have enough alignment with their faction. Here you can see how much the unit costs and here you can see how much alignment you need and if you fall below this alignment, the hired units will desert you. Once you hire the farmer, you can dismiss it if you don't want the farmer. You can give the farmer seeds and bone meal and then lead your farmer to your farm. It will also follow you if you fast travel and then set the farming mode to on and then you can set how far should the farmer plant seeds from where it's standing. 
And you also need to put down water for them to farm. You should put fences and scarecrows around your farm so rabbits and birds won't eat your crops. But if you don't, something like this will happen. So, scarecrows. The head must be schools, pumpkins or jack-o'-lanterns. The body. It has to be a solid block that is directly under the head. And the leg. It has to be a fence post of any wood. And all of this has to be in a vertical row. But you can put arms on it for decoration. If you put sand below the grass, the farmer won't plant there. This is useful if you wanna grow pumpkins or melons. They can only farm on dirt, grass and jungle mud. And if you put down a chest with an item frame on it with a hoe, the farmers will put the harvest there and they can even resupply their bone meal. Hiring soldiers. You can hire soldiers from captains for coins, but you also need to have enough alignment with their faction. You can see the price and the alignment requirement here. And if this icon shows up, that means you have to be pledged to the faction to hire the unit. The price of the unit depends on your alignment and whether you are pledged or not to the faction. The hired units follow you, even if you fast travel. They will attack enemy NPCs and players, and anything that attacks you or is attacked by you. Expect if the mob, NPC or player is on the same alignment side as the unit. You can't hurt your own units, and they will heal over time when they aren't in combat. Banner bearers can speed up their healing. You can also combat your units by right clicking on them. Here you can set to teleport to you or not. You can turn guard mode on and if you do the unit won't follow you and you can set how far he can go from where he's standing. You can give them equipment if you want. You can also see the combat level of your soldier. Every NPC that the unit kills gives 1 XP and for every level they gain they get plus 1 health points. And when they level up you will get a chat message and the firework going off. There are no limit to a unit's combat level, but the amount of XP needed exponentially grows. If your units kill enemy NPCs, you won't get alignment. Horns of Command. You can lead your army easier with them. You can craft them like this. When you first right click it, it will bring up a menu. You can choose between a halt slash ready horn or a summon horn. When you blow the halt slash ready horn, your units will be halted, meaning they immediately stand still and do nothing. But if someone attacks them, they will fight back. And when you blow the horn again, they will return to their original state. The summon horn. When you blow the horn, every unit will teleport to you as long as they fit there and their chunk is loaded. You can assign squadrons to your horns in the table of command. You can get it from buildings or craft it like this. Just right click it with the horn in your hand and name a squadron. You can assign soldiers to squadrons when you hire them here and in the command menu. So if I blow the horn that is assigned to squadron banana, the banana soldiers will come to me. There is also a sword of command, you can kill NPCs manually with it, just right click the NPC or the mob and your soldiers will kill it. And you can also assign a company to your sword of command. And this is how you can make it. You can hire heroes if you plant a tree, it can only be oak and birch. Then you have to right click it with a golden end draught and you hire the Huron. But you have to have at least 500 alignment points with Fungorn to do this. Pledging. You can pledge to one faction at a time and you have to have at least 100 alignment points with the faction. If you pledge to a faction, you can hire soldiers that have this seal here, you can hire units much cheaper and you can conquer land for your faction. You can also break the pledge if you kill NPCs and ally NPCs of the faction you're pledged with. Or you can just break it on your own. But there are penalties if the pledge gets broken. You will lose most of your alignment with the faction and there is a pledge cooldown in which you can pledge to another faction. When the time is up you will get a chat message. So conquest. You can conquer land for the faction that you are pledged with. You can do this if you kill the faction's enemies. When you kill it, it will show you a conquest number. If you reach enough conquest points, your faction's NPCs will start spawning even if they don't normally spawn there. Each kill increases the spawn rates. You can see your conquest points in the table of command. If the map shows a grey area, that means that your NPCs won't spawn there, and your conquest doesn't have an effect there. And if these stripes appear on the map, that means only your faction's allies spawn more frequently. And the conquest points will slowly decrease by one point every one hour. If your soldiers kill enemies, you will get much less conquest points than what you would get. So if I kill this orc, I will get one conquest point, but if my soldier kills it, I will get 0.25 conquest points. Drinks! You can find drinks in buildings, but you can make your own in a barrel. 
there are a bunch of recipes for it so I'm not gonna go all over them, but usually you need water at the bottom and some sort of fruit or vegetable at the top. And then press start brewing. The drinks brew in steps, each step increases its alcoholity level and you can stop brewing whenever you want. You can get the drink out of the barrel with an empty mug or cup. And when you drink a fairly high alcoholity level drink, you get a nausea effect. And the higher the alcoholity level is, the more time the nausea lasts. And when you're drunk and you speak, your text changes a bit. The higher the alcoholity is, the worse it gets. NPCs will also get affected by alcohol. Alcohol tolerance. You can get a tolerance on alcohol, so you won't get drunk from drinking. You can get a higher alcohol tolerance by drinking even more. You can even poison your drinks and it's really deadly. You can even use barrels as boats. And draught. You can find them in fungorn in jars. And they give you some useful effects. You can drink it from bowls. If you have negative element with fungorn and you drink it, then you will get poison for 5 seconds. You can make your own end draught by filling an end jar with water and then right click the jar with a special plant. And you have to do all this in fungorn. Here are the special plants and their effects. Crafting tables. Each faction has its own crafting table and you need to have plus one element with that faction to use it. And with it you can craft the faction's items. So if I craft a sword in a Gondorian crafting table, I will get a Gondorian sword. But if I craft it in a Rohirric crafting table, I will get a Rohirric sword. And the items might need different materials. For example, if I want an Uruk sword, I will need Uruk ingots instead of iron. Invasions. It's an event where a bunch of enemies appear and attack you until you defeat the invasion. Invasions can spawn almost anywhere, anytime and even more than one can spawn at the same time. A large floating weapon shows the invasion. Around 50 enemies will spawn in waves. And if you defeat the invasion, you get a bunch of element and conquest points. You can even make your own invasions. You just have to buy one horn from a captain for 2000 coins and you have to have 1500 element points. Protecting land. If you protect the land, other players can break or place blocks, open chests, etc. And even other factions mobs can spawn. You can do this if you put a banner on top of a bronze block, silver block or a gold block. Bronze protects 17 by 17 by 17 area, silver protects 33 by 33 by 33 area and gold protects 65 by 65 by 65 area. You can view the protected areas by pressing F3. When you right click the banner, you have two options, faction or whitelist. If you choose faction, you can set how much element point you need with the faction that the banner is from to bypass the protection. For example, you need 500 points with Nerhorod to break blocks in this area. If you set it to whitelist, you can write players and fellowships names that can bypass the protection. With this little icon, you can add permissions to other players, so now I give permissions to use crafting tables. You can give permissions to players individually. And with this icon you can set the banner to protect itself or not. Now let's talk about Mistral. This is the strongest story in the game. It generates in the Misty Mountains below Y16 and it looks like this. You can only smelt it in a Dwarven Forge. Only Dwarves can reforge Mistral items, but if you're on the evil side, don't worry. Weak Dwarves spawn in Mordor, Angmar and Rudel and they can reforge it for you. If you wanna make Misril armor, you have to make Misril mail first, then craft the armor. You can make portals to the overworld. There are two portals, one for the good side and one for the evil side. First I'm gonna show you the good side. You have to place Elder Wheel like this. Then dig a 3x3 hole. Put water in the middle and throw an Elonir into it. And the bad side, place 12 Mordor, Angmar, Dulguldur or Gondor bricks like this. Then put Guldorill on the bricks. Dig a 3x3 three three hole. Fill it with lava. and throw a bone into it. 
Utumno, it's another dimension to the game, which is basically a huge dungeon. You can enter it here. And here's the portal to Utumno. If you want your soldiers to come with you, just push them in and quickly jump in. If you're too slow, you may spawn somewhere else far away from your soldiers. It consists of three levels, ice level, obsidian level and fire level. With each level the difficulty increases. You cannot break Utomno blocks, just with the pickaxe of the underworld, which you can get by killing mobs. You can get the chills of Daedalus in the ice level by killing ice mobs. To get to the obsidian level you have to craft an ice key from mob drops. You have to go to the bottom floor of the level and right click with the key, and you have a way down. If smoke particles appear, that means that you aren't on the bottom floor. If you wanna get to the fire level, you have to do the same just craft an obsidian key instead of an ice. Balrog spawn in the fire level. If you kill it, it will always drop a flame of Odin, and there is a chance that it will drop its weapon. You can leave Utomno by dying, or finding this plate in the fire level and killing 15 enemies within 3 blocks of it. Then this being comes out of it and you're back to middle earth. Bosses. There are two bosses in the mod. The first one is a Malorn Ant and the other one is a Hill Troll Chieftain. First, let's take a look at the Mallorn Ant. You can spawn it by planting a Mallorn tree in Fungorn and right clicking it with Gulduril. You have to have minus Fungorn alignment to do this. Then some ants will try to cure the sapling and you have to kill 3 of these ants in order to spawn the boss. The boss can spawn ants and hurons and can even heal itself from trees, so make sure to cut down some trees before you spawn it. And when you first kill it, it will start going and from this point on, you can only damage the boss when it's on fire. If you kill it, you will get a bunch of items and minus alignment with Fungorn. You can deal more damage to ants with axes, battle axes and with fire. So the heal troll chieftain, you have to put 3 troll statue pieces together, you can get this from killing heal trolls. And at night it will open its mouth and you have to right click it with a bone and the boss spawns. And you have to have negative alignment with Angmar to do this. You have to kill the boss 3 times to defeat it. It can also spawn heal trolls and has a bunch of abilities and can even heal from other trolls, killing them in the process. You have to kill the boss until the sun rises or kill it where the sun doesn't shine, for example Mordor, because like normal trolls, when sun shines, the troll will turn into stone, and when this happens, you won't be able to kill it, and you lost all the reward and the totem. If you kill the boss, you can get gondolian swords, armor pieces, schools, and junk. In the jungle, you can find these pyramids. You can break blocks at them. It has three levels, which are mazes, and a treasure room. In the third level, there are traps too. When you get to the treasure room, you can disable the protection by breaking this banner. And also, be careful when you open the chest. There is also an extremely rare golden variant of this pyramid. Golem! You can find him under high pass in the misty mountains. You can tame him with a bunch of fish. He can carry items for you and sometimes he catches a fish for you. And you can make him sit. Which for him means jumping up and down in the same place. When Golem dies, after some time he will respawn under high pass. You can tame Golem even if another player owns him. You just need to give him even more fish. Every time he is tame he will require more fish than last time. But this resets if he dies. Orc Bombs! You can hire Orc and Warg Bombardiers from Mordor, but you can craft your own bombs like this. On Dur, Uruk, Morgul and Angmar crafting tables. And you can even upgrade it. You can only lit it with an Orc Torch. And you can make it fiery like this. Kamul's Fire! It's a firebomb, it explodes instantly and blue flames will appear, that can burn down forests far faster than normal fire. It can explode if it falls, if you shoot it with an arrow, light it with a flint and steel, and if you place it near fire. You can make it like this in a runic crafting table. You can get the gilded iron ingot with golden nuggets and iron ingots in an alloy forge. 
You can ride a bunch of animals, for example camels, giraffes, rhinos, elks, etc. And you can tame them the same way you can tame horses in vanilla. But some factions have their own animals that you can ride, but you need some alignment to do that. For example wargs, spiders, etc. And with spiders you can even climb walls. Dalish crackers, you can get it from Dalish merchants, and usually they give you useless items. But you can make your own crackers like this, in a Dalish crafting table, and you can use almost any die. And you can put your own items in it, and give it to a friend. If trolls are exposed to sunlight for too long, they will turn into stone. Quagmire, it's basically mud, but you can sink into it and suffocate. You can break it with a shovel, and you can mainly find it in the dead marshes. And it's really good if you wanna make traps with it. Mystery webs, you can only get it from Mirkwood spiders. You can find these spiders in Mirkwood, obviously. And they give you useful or useless items. Or a spider. There is also another word type, which is classic. The biomes are randomly generated, so there isn't a map. And you could find Mordor next to a huge desert. Don't try to kill a horse in Rohan, because they will attack you. Don't steal grapes from Dorvinion, because they will attack you. And don't cut down trees in Fongord and in the Old Forest. Bandits are NPCs that can steal items from you. When this happens, a chat message appears. If you kill the bandit that stole from you, you get back your items. And Smattery. With it, you can get back some resources from weapons, armor, tools, etc. And you need coal as fuel. And you can craft it like this. Hobbit ovens. You can only cook food in it and nothing else. And they are half as fast as normal furnaces. But it has 9 slots, so I think it's worth using. You can make it like this in a hobbit crafting table. You can only see the dwarven doors at night. You can craft it like this in the dwarf crafting table. But as you can see it doesn't glow, so if you wanna make the glowy one, then you have to craft it like this. You can get it healed in with a silver ingot and a mystery nugget in an elven forge. And you can even make it bigger. You can crave messages into walls with chisel. You can craft it like this. If you wanna use it, just right click a stone or a wood block and you can write on it. There is also a moon chisel which only shows up at night. You can make it by adding an Ithild into a chisel in a dwarf or elven crafting table. In the north you can freeze, but you can counter it with fur armor. In near Harad in the desert you can fry and you can counter it with Harad robes. Now let's take a look at a few easter eggs. You can find a huge cherry tree in Mordor. You can find a shack's house in the dead marshes. On Christmas everyone will wear a hat, it will be snowing everywhere and Gandalf will walk around in Santa's costume. You can spawn jazz elves with this command. On Halloween NPCs will wear pumpkins. On April Fools some things becomes um, weird. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. Bye.